let's go on a journey through four years of four different holiday home tours. The holidays are such a wonderful time where you can bring people together and create lasting memories. So grab a cup of cocoa, grab a cozy blanket, and let's get started on this ultimate Christmas home tour. Entering my home, you're greeted by a festive and inviting entryway. Now, I love switching up the decorations for Christmas every single year in this area. This year, we brought in a bench from upstairs and we decorated it. This is also the first introduction to our color scheme, which is blue and white with touches of gold. So the first thing I did was I got a garland and I draped it asymmetrically over the bench. I filled it with ornaments, greenery, festive Merry Christmas ribbon, and sparkly Christmas lights. For a cozy touch and an added pop of color, I have this beautiful velvet plush blanket that I draped over the other side of the bench. And to keep with that cozy factor, I've got some pillows, but instead of just leaving them plain, I took some blue ribbon and I wrapped it around the pillow and tied it into a bow like a present. And then I have another sparkly snowflake pillow that adds a wintry touch. On this side of the bench over here, I wanted to add some height variation. So I got a small side table and I added a tabletop Christmas tree on top. I filled it with the same ornaments, botanicals, and ribbon as I had on the garland and then topped it with a beautiful sparkly white star. At the base of our side table, we have some lanterns. Now, if you remember these lanterns, we gave them a makeover. We added a pearlescent paint to the top of these lanterns, which gave them a beautiful sheen. I filled these lanterns with some frosty snow and added some battery operated flicker flame candles to the center. To add a Christmas touch to the top of the lanterns, I added some small picks. These have some pine branches, leaves, berries, a snowflake ornament and I tied it to the lantern with a royal blue bow. And because we love height variation, we're going to add the large lantern on top of a sled. And then the final touch that we have in our foyer are some white cone Christmas trees. I added two to each side of the bench. This entryway turned out so elegant and classy. It sets the tone for holiday cheer and it's an inviting way to welcome your guests into your home. The first visible room right off the entryway is this dining room. And the area that catches your eye first is the back wall. I have a table there that I wanted to decorate in a grand way. So I got some tall vases. I added a pine topiary ball to the top. I hung a crystal snowflake in the center. Above the crystal snowflake, I got a segment of royal blue and gold snowflake ribbon. This is from Hobby Lobby. I tied it into a bow and attached it to the styrofoam ball with a boutonniere pin. These little boutonniere pins are holding all the decorative elements to the styrofoam ball and they're doing it in a beautiful way because it has this decorative pearl on the end. So some other things that I hung on the topiary ball were some icicles, which I hung to the sides in the front with fishing line, and I tied a navy blue bow around the vase. These tall vases topped with these decorative topiaries give this table drama and elegance. I also added a variety of glass Christmas trees, a beautiful white village house, and an elegantly framed winter print in the back. This print is from my website and it adds sophistication to this tablescape. In keeping with that grand feel, I wanted to create a large regal centerpiece for this large table. We're gonna start off by layering two runners. And then in the center of the runners, I created a garland. Now, if you remember this garland, it was a dupe. We took two swags, put them together, and decorated them with all kinds of berries, ornaments, and ribbons. We saved ourselves so much money by creating this ourselves, and I love the way that it looks. In the center of the garland, I added a riser, 
and I topped the riser in a plush velvet fabric that again brings in her color scheme but adds some softness to the table. And then on top of the riser, I have Santa's sleigh. I filled his sleigh with his bag that is overflowing with presents that cascade down the bag, into the sleigh, and onto the riser. You have to have a reindeer pulling the sleigh, so I placed a stately gold reindeer in front. I added a bow to his neck and then attached the reindeer to the sleigh with two gold beaded garland segments. On the chandelier up above, I took some ribbon and I wrapped it around the top of the chandelier and tied it into a bow. This gives this large light fixture a festive touch. On the back wall behind me, I have two large ginger jars. I hung a wooden star from the lid. In the center of the mirror, I created a layered wreath. This is a pine wreath that has a gold bottle brush wreath in the center. I added leaf and berry picks and a Merry Christmas bow in the center. This exquisitely adorned Christmas dining room is an elegant sight to behold, and I'm delighted it's the first room that my guests will see when they enter my home. Here in my bedroom, I wanted to create a classic design and I decorated it a little more formally than the rest of the house. We're gonna start off with this beautiful garland on my mantle. I decided on an asymmetrical design because I loved that asymmetrical garland that we had on our bench. So I'm carrying that through to this fireplace garland right here. To the garland, I added gold strands of beads. I also added frosty leaves, white leaves, snowflakes, poinsettias, and Merry Christmas ribbon. I hung gold gems, icicle ornaments, and five terrariums. Inside of these adorable little terrariums, I added some frosty snow and battery-operated candles. The nighttime ambiance that the candles in the terrariums give off, combined with the fireplace flicker, is simply magical. On top of the fireplace, I have two large candlesticks. I wrapped bows and some more botanicals around the top of the candlesticks. I added some glass Christmas trees. In the center, I have a stunning wintry print that again is from my website. This print adds a formal, classic elegance that I want to evoke in this space. I love the look of a potted Christmas tree, so I wanted one in this space. So I got a Christmas tree and I placed it inside of a large white container and then decorated this tree with the same ornaments, berries, and ribbons that we have on our garland. And I even added a couple of terrariums to this tree because I wanted that magical ambiance to carry from the garland over to the Christmas tree. I had a vacant space at the base of the mantle. So I filled that with three ginger jars. These are blue and white ginger jars with touches of gold. These jars add weight to the mantlescape, but also add the pop of color that we need to continue our color scheme. I have two nightstands on either side of my bed and to the top I added a ginger jar. I wrapped a royal blue ribbon around the lid and hung a crystal ornament in the center. On the other side, I placed a bottle brush Christmas tree with pearl ornaments, and in the center, I have a small cloche that I filled with frosty snow and a lucite reindeer. In the center of my large mirrors, I added some bottle brush wreaths. Again, I put some picks of frosted leaves and berries to the side, and a large Merry Christmas bow in the center. These wreaths are hung with fishing lines so you don't know how they're hanging. They just mysteriously hover in the center of the mirror. To infuse a little bit of blue into my bedding, what I did was I took some of that ribbon, wrapped it around the pillows and tied it into a bow like a present, just like we did in our foyer. If you remember how we created the snowflake on our center pillow, it was a vinyl decal. We ironed on to a pillow covering and then added a down feather insert inside. 
This blue snowflake pillow is a classy yet affordable addition to my bedding. This beautiful bedroom adorned with exquisite decor emanates a warm and inviting Christmas atmosphere. It's exactly what I had envisioned when I began decorating this room. As you walk past the entryway, you are greeted by this formal living room. And the first thing that you see is this large Christmas tree. It's a nine foot Christmas tree and I decorated it with a variety of different ribbons. I have a large white ribbon, a navy ribbon, and also a snowflake ribbon. I filled this Christmas tree with all kinds of ornaments. One ornament that is not yet on the tree is this pickle. Now a fun tradition that we do in our family is we take this pickle on Christmas Eve night and we hide it deep in the tree. Then each child takes turn trying to find this pickle. They have 30 second increments and it's a riot. It's so funny because they can't touch the tree. They just have to look like this. Last year it took them 30 minutes to find this pickle, but don't worry, there's always a great prize at the end. They decided that the prize was going to be one of those giant Hershey Kisses that's as big as your face. You may not do the pickle tradition at your house, but if you do have a special tradition that you do with your family, leave me a comment and let me know about it. I love learning about the traditions that each of you do to make your holidays special. I have two sconces on this side of the room and two on the other. And to add a festive touch, all I did was take some ribbon and tie it around these sconces. In the center of my mirror, I created a wreath. Again, this is a duped wreath that we made. We saved ourselves hundreds of dollars creating this wreath. I attached it to a command hook in the center of the mirror. I have two side tables in this room and it is a perfect area for me to display my nativities. Now, the birth of Christ is what we celebrate in our home, so it's important that I highlight that in a very special way. So what I did was I laid out my nativities and then I took a large cloche. This is a duped cloche that we made. I tied a ribbon around the top and hung a mirrored star in the center. I love how these grand cloches draw attention to these nativities. This room was decorated in a more minimalist way, but it still evokes the feeling of Christmas. Sitting in this room, I feel a peaceful and calm feeling. We finally made it to the heart of the home, which is, of course, the kitchen and family room area. I wanted to create a dazzling centerpiece for our center island. I placed a glass riser over a vinyl runner and tucked the greenery underneath. On top of the riser, I added a forest of bottle brush Christmas trees to a circular marble cutting board and then covered the trees in a tall glass cloche. To the other side of the riser, I added a trio of white ginger jars. I wrapped a ribbon around the lids and added a lucite snowflake to the center. One of the worst parts about decorating for Christmas is all of the sparkles that fall onto the ground, all of the tree debris that comes off of the tree when you're fluffing all the branches. We put this tree up last night and you guys, the ground below it is full of all kinds of artificial pine needles. I gotta vacuum it up. So I have this fabulous Fabuletta cordless vacuum that is going to help me do this. It came to my house well packaged. I unboxed it easily and put it together with no problem at all. There were just a few steps and now I have these cordless vacuums. I have two vacuums. I have one in a beautiful shade of blue, and then I also have one in a gray and a black. What you need to do is just charge these batteries. It doesn't take very long at all. I'm gonna take my battery and simply slide it into place, just like that. These vacuums are adjustable, so depending on how tall you are, you can adjust these vacuums to the perfect height. So now all we need to do is turn it on. There's a little button here and it's super quiet. 
Now we can start to vacuum up all of that Christmas debris. These are also very lightweight, so you can take them up and down the stairs without lugging them all over the place. They only weigh a little over two pounds. And to make them even lighter, all you need to do is press this button and pull this off. Now you have a handheld vacuum. I've got this attachment. I'm just gonna put it right in there and we're good to go. So you can take this vacuum. You can clean the baseboards of your house. You can clean the stairs right in those nooks and crannies. You can take this thing outside and clean your car. Comes with a couple different attachments and it also comes with a fabulous wall mount so you can store it easily. This Fabuleta vacuum also has an LED light so you can clean every nook and cranny in your house in dim lighting. It's also got adjustable suction, a low, middle, and high suction level. We have some fabulous discounts going on right now. The Double 11 Mega Sale is offering up to 90% off site-wide. You can use my code at checkout for more discounts. You can also download the AliExpress app and enter the dollar challenge for a chance to win 3,000 shopping credits or 10,000 flight credits. You can also download the AliExpress app and join the dollar challenge for a chance to buy products such as a new laptop for just $1. I will leave a link to this fabulous Fabuleta vacuum in my description box as well as all of the coupon codes so you can head on over to AliExpress and check out all the amazing products that they have. On the back countertop over here, I have two mini displays. I created some festive floral arrangements, a bottle brush tree, a glass Christmas tree, and I placed these items on top of a marble tray. Around my pot filler, I hung a gem encrusted wreath. It is just a stunning wreath. I added a command hook to the tile and then I placed the wreath on the command hook. It looks like little diamonds on this wreath. I just love it so much. I love it so much that I went back to Home Goods and guess what? They had a smaller wreath that was identical and it had a glass candle holder in the center. I put this wreath on top of a marble Lazy Susan and then I added a scented candle to the center. An easy way to bring in that holiday feeling is with a scented candle. If you don't have time to do a simmer pot, just grab a scented candle, light it, and it will immediately bring in that festive holiday aroma. I added several Christmas plates to my glass front and cabinets. And then of course, we've got to have some ribbons around my sconces and my pendant lights. This is such an easy way to infuse your color scheme into your decorations. To the center of my breakfast table, I have an orchid floral arrangement. To theme it into Christmas and my color scheme, all I did was I took some navy blue ribbon and wrapped it around the stems of the orchids. At the base of the floral arrangement, I added a few gold ornaments. I just scattered them around the base. And then right here in the front of the arrangement, I placed a Joy Noel sign. Now let's talk about this blocked Christmas tree. I cannot even tell you how much I love the way it looks this year. We added those white ribbons, navy blue ribbon, navy blue and gold stripe ribbon down the entire height of the tree. This infuses this tree with our color scheme. Once the ribbon was in place, I simply just added all kinds of ornaments to this tree. I have icicle ornaments, feather ornaments, pearl ornaments, lucite and gold snowflakes, crystal gems, poinsettias, berries and leaves. I have a mirrored star at the top and then at the bottom I have a tree skirt with pearls. Now one thing that is missing from the base of our Christmas tree is our Polar Express train. This is another one of those traditions that we have in our family. This is one that my husband does with our kiddos. He gets the train out, they assemble it around the base of the Christmas tree, and then they watch the Polar Express and have hot cocoa. This is definitely a special tradition that these kids look forward to every single year. If we take a few steps over from the tree, we're at the fireplace mantle. 
The garland on this mantle is similar to our Christmas tree. What I did to create this garland was I got two garlands and I weaved them together. I have a pine garland and a frosted garland. And to this garland, I added those same ornaments that I have on the tree, the same botanicals, the same ribbons. That way these two pieces coordinate beautifully together. The stockings that I have on this garland are cream and they have pearls on it. That matches the tree skirt. On top of the mantle, I have two large grapevine Christmas trees. If you remember, we painted these white and I love the natural feeling that these grapevine trees add to the mantlescape. In the center and as the focal point right in front of my mirror, I have a European art print. I framed this in a beautiful gold frame. I love the European countryside village scene this print is, of course, available on my website, and I love the way that it ties not only the wintry feeling that we want on this mantlescape together, but it also adds a sophistication to this mantle display. Now let's move on from the garland over to our shelves. I had the best time decorating these shelves. What we did was gather up a whole bunch of glass apothecary jars. We filled them with frosty snow, mini village houses, and bottle brush Christmas trees. To the lid, I got a segment of navy blue ribbon and wrapped it around the top and tied it into a bow, and then hung a crystal snowflake in the center. If you haven't guessed by now, one of those themes that we have running through our house are these wintry village houses. I have some larger village houses that I added to these shelves. Right here I have a church and I placed it on top of a marble tray and added some bottle brush Christmas trees to the side. Behind our village houses I have some more wreaths. Again, these are those layered wreaths. I got a pine wreath and in front of it I placed a gold bottle brush wreath and then added those leaf and berry picks to each side and then took a segment of the Merry Christmas ribbon, tied it into a bow and then attached it to the center. On the shelf above the TV I have a trio of wintry village houses. One thing that I do love about all these village houses is that they light up. So at night they have a magical feeling and it just looks so festive. On the opposite side of the village houses, I have a tabletop Christmas tree, which I decorated in the same bows and ornaments and botanicals as I did on our large Christmas tree and the garland. And then in the center, I have another beautiful wintry print. This print is so pretty. And if you can notice, all four prints that I have throughout my house are in the same color scheme. By coordinating these beautiful prints, it integrates these spaces together and makes them feel harmonious. So now that our shelves are done, let's move over to the opposite side of the room. This buffet is one of my favorite places to decorate every single year because of the large size. I can create a grand spectacular display, which is what we did. Let's start off by making these topiary trees. All I did was get an urn, I added a trellis to the center, and I wrapped the trellis in a garland. Then I filled my topiary tree with all kinds of ornaments and ribbons that coordinate with the rest of the ornaments and ribbons in the room, and then added a crystal star to the top. We have created so many wreaths this year in our decorating, so it only makes sense that we have a wreath on this mirror as well. This is a stacked wreath. I have a frosted pine wreath that's in the back. I have a bottle brush wreath in the front, and then I added some berry and leaf picks to the side. And of course, I'm using that same Merry Christmas ribbon, which I tied into a bow and placed in the center. I love the way it adds an additional festive touch to this large mirror. I have two large lanterns, and the color scheme on these lanterns is perfect. It's almost like a grayish tone on the lantern itself and it has a white top. 
Inside of the lantern, I added some frosty snow and a lucite reindeer. To the handle at the top of the lantern, I took some of this royal blue ribbon that has gold snowflakes on it, tied it into a bow, and then I have these lucite snowflakes, the same snowflakes that are back there on the center of my ginger jar, and I'm adding them to the center of these lanterns. That way, these two spaces, again, tie together. Now, in the center, I have a large mirrored tray, and to the tray, I have added the most stunning lucite reindeer. I purchased this at Home Goods. It's tall, it's regal, the antlers are curved in such an elegant and beautiful way. It truly is magnificent. One last wintry detail that we have on this tablescape is a garland that has a frosted pine branches, berries, and pine cones. My favorite time to admire my home is at night when the lights are twinkling, the fireplace is on, the candles are burning, the warm glow evokes that Christmas feeling. It's a feeling that you can get only at this time of year. We have added festive touches to every room in this house, which ensures that the holiday spirit can carry throughout my entire home. And I am going to leave you with an uninterrupted tour of my home. The theme in my foyer as you enter into the home is a North Pole winter wonderland. I added three trees, I staggered the heights, and I decorated these trees with sage ribbons, with some white ribbons, with some botanicals. I made some large bows at the top for my tree toppers, and then I added a variety of ornaments. Of course, Santa is at the North Pole, so down at the base of these trees, I have a little North Pole village, and Santa is the main character. This is my thrifted Santa that I purchased last year, and in front of him is a large white sleigh, which I filled with Santa's bag that has some presents inside, and they are overflowing into the sleigh. On top of one of the presents, I placed a countdown calendar. These are so fun. My kids love these. They change the date every single day and it really amps up that excitement and for the night that Santa comes down the chimney. Pulling our sleigh is a one reindeer. This reindeer is perfect for this setting. I embellish him with some ribbons and some gold beads. And then to fill in the rest of the space down at the bottom, I simply wrapped up some boxes in some festive paper and I tied them in some sage ribbon, some white and gold ribbon, which ties the color scheme of this foyer together. Now that we're done decorating the foyer, let's move over into our dining room. Now, because we did our trees in the foyer, I had to move that buffet table, and so I moved it into the dining room. Luckily, we have enough space in here, so let's decorate this table. We're gonna start off with our broken mirror Christmas tree. I made this Christmas tree about two years ago. I absolutely love it. It's perfect in this space. It's tall, it adds an element of height, and it reflects the light back into the room. On top of my buffet table, I have this beautiful orchid arrangement. And to theme it into Christmas, I simply added some ornaments and some mirrored stars. On either side of my orchid flower arrangement, I have some bottle brush Christmas trees. I put some on top of some mini cake stands and some on a cupcake stand. One addition that I've added since I did my dining room reveal was our framed Christmas notes to Santa for myself and my husband when we were children. These are such sentimental pieces. I love them. And who does not want a hundred GoBots? I don't know. I know that I do. I know my husband did when he was probably five. So these are so fun. These are sentimental pieces and they're going to stay right next to our bottle brush Christmas trees. Now we're going to move from the foyer table over to the buffet. Now on top of my buffet, 
I placed two topiary Christmas trees. We made these out of some garland pieces that we flocked and added a whole bunch of ornaments to these topiary trees. At the top, I have some bows that are made out of those white and sage ribbons. In between our topiary Christmas trees, I have created a nativity scene. This is a very special nativity scene to me. I purchased it in Guatemala and I added the pieces throughout the buffet top. Then I added a string of lights around our individual nativity pieces and to cover up the mechanics of all of the lights and the extension cords and everything else, I added some polyfill over the top. I love how the polyfill softens everything and it makes it feel like our nativity is floating on a cloud. Now I wanted something dramatic for our dining table centerpiece. So I took another nativity. If you couldn't tell, the theme in this room is nativities. So I took this white nativity and I placed it on top of a mirror. Such an easy idea and it's so unique. What I did with my individual pieces was I put it inside of the different segments that were on my mirror. In the center of the mirror, I placed a cake stand and then I put Mary Joseph and the baby Jesus on top of this cake stand. And then I took a large cloche and I put it over the top. Talk about drama. There is no mistaking that our nativity is the center point to this dining table. On either side of my nativity, I placed some teardrop swags, which I embellished a little bit more in some extra ornaments, some pine cones, and then I took some flicker flame candles. I put those inside of a votive candle holder and then I placed them inside of our teardrop swags. On my chandelier above, I have some snowflakes. I hung these snowflake ornaments behind the crystals that were on the lower tier of this chandelier. And then I added a sage bow to the top. This is a great way to add a pop of color. You don't typically think about decorating a light fixture, so by simply adding a bow, it themes it, and it also can bring in a different color or highlight a color that you're trying to use in your color scheme. Now we've got our buffet decorated, our dining table centerpiece done. Now we're gonna come over to this bar cart. I love our bar cart. I added some large glass apothecary jars to the top. I added some sage bows and some sparkly crystal ornaments to the top of my apothecary jars. I have a smaller one right here. And then of course we've got to have some treats on our bar cart. It's Christmas after all. So I have some candy canes and I have some chocolates. This used to be a lot more full. I have a feeling that somebody behind the camera has had a snack or two. Am I right? Guilty. <laughs> That's okay. We'll refill it. It's not a big deal. And then down at the bottom, I have some popcorn and I have a beautiful sign as well as another bottle brush Christmas tree, which I placed on top of a cake stand and covered the whole thing in a cloche. I love this bar cart. People can come by, grab a snack, either in or on their way out of the house. It's just a fun holiday touch. My hope was that after people had come into the home, seen our North Pole Winter Wonderland trees, caught a glimpse of the dining room that they would want to come further into the house and come sit down and just enjoy some time lounging and chatting and enjoying the living room. So I tried to make a space that was warm and inviting, but also very elegant. Let me show you how I decorated my side tables on either side of the couch. I have some large glass vases and at the top of the vases, I created some topiary balls. I used some styrofoam and I covered it in some pine branches. I added some ornaments and some crystals. The crystals bring in that elegant factor that I love in this room. I did two different sizes, a large one and then a smaller one on the shorter vase. And then I created a ribbon collar out of some sage ribbon. Again, ties in that color scheme. And then at the bottom, I have a marble tray. And on top of the marble tray, I put some lucite reindeer and a glass Christmas tree. 
And then I covered everything in a cloche and tied a sage ribbon to the top of the cloche. My light sconces in here also are getting a makeover. They get a sage bow. I just tied a bow around these sconces. I love the way they look. They are so festive, but very elegant. Now let's talk about our Christmas tree. I love this Christmas tree. It is so gorgeous. It's definitely the focal point in this room. I decorated it in those sage, white, and gold ribbons. I added some more formal ornaments to this tree. I have some large glass ornaments, some mercury mirrored ornaments, some large tassels. And then I added my botanicals, which were some berries, some poinsettias, some frosted leaves. And then at the top, I have a mirrored star. I could not find a tree skirt that would go along with my color scheme this year. So I just created my own. What I did was I got a sage drapery panel and I just wrapped it around the base of the tree. If you don't have a tree skirt that matches with your color scheme or your theme, an easy solution is to get something like a tablecloth or a towel or a drapery panel in this instance. All those things would work wonderfully and you wouldn't have to buy anything new and it would be custom to your specific tree. in the heart of the home, the kitchen, the breakfast table, and the family room. This is where we spend the majority of the time as a family of six. My guess is because the food's in here. <laughs> Everybody's hungry all the time. Christmas tree and I flocked it. We changed the color of the container of this tree and then we decorated it in some beautiful ornaments and some bows at the top. Right here in the front, I have some mini Christmas village houses. These were just ornaments and they're going to be perfect on our display. They light up, which is so cute. And then to the side, I've created a floral arrangement and then put it inside of a container that has a deer on either side. This centerpiece is the perfect size for this island. It doesn't take up too much counter space. Now let's move to the back wall of the kitchen and I created two different displays on either side of the stovetop. These displays consist of a marble tray. I put a flower arrangement on the top of the marble tray, and then I have some bottle brush Christmas trees to the side. Above my stove and around my pot filler, I created a wreath, and I just embellished it the same way that I've embellished everything else with those ornaments and a ribbon at the top. I used a command hook to attach it to the tile. The command hook holds this wreath beautifully and I really love the way it embellishes the pot filler. To coordinate with the other lights in my home, I have some bows on my pendant lights right here above the island. I simply just took that sage ribbon and tied it around these pendant lights. I love the way that it looks. It's such a beautiful, subtle touch, but it definitely themes these lights into holiday. Another way to easily theme a kitchen is by simply switching out your regular dishware for some festive holiday dishware. Inside of my glass fronted cabinets, I put some snowflake plates. I have a sentimental Christmas tree plate. I have some merry and bright plates at the top shelf. And then I also added some crystal candlesticks that look like snowflakes. Super easy, but it looks fantastic from afar. It definitely feels like Christmas in these cabinets. Now let's move from our kitchen over to our breakfast table. This is where we eat on a regular basis, so I didn't want to do too much to this table. For our centerpiece, I have an orchid arrangement, and all I did to theme it into Christmas was to add some ornaments and some bows to this arrangement. I love this Christmas tree. It is so festive. It's so beautiful and it 
gives off an elegant factor because it is flocked. The white flocking on this tree just makes everything pop. All the ornaments look beautiful. And this was where we started off using our sage gold and white ribbons. I had those ribbons that just billow down the sides of the tree. And then I just filled this tree with ornaments, with our botanicals, with our berries, our poinsettias. And then at the top, I have a white star that matches perfectly with the flocking on this tree. As we make our way down the tree to the bottom, I have a tree skirt that's white. It has some pearls on it and some beautiful stitching detail. And then around our Christmas tree skirt, we have our Polar Express train. This is a tradition that my husband does with the kiddos. It's so fun. They get the train out every single year. They put it around the bottom of the tree. They have hot cocoa and they have donuts and they watch the Polar Express. It's such a fun tradition for my husband and our kiddos to have some bonding time at Christmas. Blake, do you love that? You yeah. love that tradition? Yes, I it's do. It's a fun tradition. So if you have some fun traditions in your family, keep them going and try and incorporate it into your decor pieces. Now let's move from the tree over to our fireplace mantle. If you can believe it or not, I've never hung stockings from our mantle. Crazy, right? But I found some stockings this year that matched perfectly with my tree skirt. They have the pearls, they have that stitching detail, and I knew that they would be beautiful on my mantle, so that's where they are this year. I have a row of six. So in order to accommodate our stockings, I needed to do a garland that was tight to the top. So this garland is just right over the top of the mantle. I added those ornaments, the bows, the berries, the poinsettias that have been all throughout the rest of the house. And then on top of our mantle, I have some mercury gold candlesticks. I tied a sage bow around these candlesticks and I also added some small little leaves. And then in the center, I have these white cone Christmas trees. I put two on either side. I love the white color on these trees and how they have a little bit of sparkle at the top, which makes these trees feel snowy and magical. I was really excited to decorate my shelves this year for Christmas because I knew that my color scheme was going to be sage. So a few months back, I found these sage ginger jars at Home Goods, and I knew that they would be perfect on my shelves. So I have my mini sage ginger jars, and then in the center, I have some bottle brush Christmas trees. Behind that, I've got my gold acanthus wreath stand, and then I have these large ginger jars to the side. These are white. Again, they're from Home Goods. And to make them festive, I added a bow with some botanicals on it and a large white wooden star. This is a perfect way to decorate a piece that you already have. Just give it a little holiday flair and it will fit perfectly into your seasonal items. On my center shelf, I have a nativity. Again, in this room, I wanted our theme to be nativities because in our family, the focus at Christmas is the birth of our Savior. So that is what I have right in the center of our shelf. I also have some glass Christmas trees, and then I wanted to add a wintry element. So I have some snowflakes that I hung with fishing line from the top of the shelf. I love the way that these hang down and spin and make it look like it's snowing. <music> my favorite decorated space this year is this wall. We're going to start off by decorating this large mirror. I wanted to do an asymmetrical garland, so I hung my thick garland in an asymmetrical style. I filled my garland with bows and ornaments and botanicals, and then I have some hanging gems. I just put some fishing line on them and they hang down beautifully. 
to give this wall symmetry, I added this tall tabletop Christmas tree on this side. It tricks your eye into thinking that everything's symmetrical, but it also beautifies this side of the table. This was a thrifted Christmas tree that we made over a couple years back. Again, it's just filled with those same ornaments and bows as we've used in the rest of the house. And then I have a mirrored star at the top. Another thing that I wanted to stick to this year was that North Pole Village theme. So we have our North Pole Winter Wonderland in the foyer, and so I wanted to carry that through in this space. I purchased some winter white village houses at Home Goods. These are rather large, and they light up. They're covered in some festive sparkles and snow. It just has such a warm, wintry feeling. So I placed one next to my tree and one on top of a sled. The other thing that I have on my sled is a sleigh and Santa's got to be in his sleigh with his bag full of presents. So that's what we have. These presents are spilling out of the bag and out of the sleigh onto the sled. And then on this side, I have some cloches and inside of these cloches, I put some Epsom salt snow and then I added some of those mini Christmas Village House is the same one that we have right over there on our centerpiece on our island. Having them there and having them here ties those elements together. In my large glass apothecary jar, I placed some more Epsom salt snow, another one of those village houses, and then I wrapped a glass beaded garland around the top and tied it together with a sage bow. So you know how we used a drapery panel in the living room for a tree skirt? Well, we're gonna stick along those same lines and we're gonna use something a little more unconventional for our tabletop here. I have a fuzzy white blanket and it just reminds me of snow. So I folded it into thirds and I'm using it as a tablecloth. If you do not have a tablecloth or a runner, a blanket is an awesome option and it can really save you from purchasing extra items, which is good for your budget. I'm going to end this video with a short walkthrough. I'm not gonna talk, it's just gonna be music and you can see everything one more time one final tour around the house. What's going to be expected in the rest of the house? So it's a good place to start with your color combinations and your design styles. Now I am going to be doing asymmetrical garlands pretty much in every single room and it starts right here in the foyer. I have an asymmetrical garland that I hung from my mirror. I filled it with lights and ornaments and bows. On my table, I have a variety of accessories and I decided to use some glass jars. I filled them with some bottle bush trees, Epsom salt snow, and I topped them with some bows and some gorgeous crystal ornaments. I also added some Christmas lists from when my husband and I were children, some gift boxes, and then on the far end, I added a tabletop Christmas tree again with those same ornaments that I added in my garland. One addition that I did make is this Santa key. Now we have lived in homes where we haven't had a chimney before, so Santa's gotta be able to get in somehow. So we have this magical key that Santa can use. If he's got stuff that's too big to come down the chimney, he can feel free to use. I also added a few extra things to my nightstands. First, I put down a marble tile that I purchased at Home Depot. And then on top of that, I put some faux fur Christmas trees and a cloche with a pine cone Christmas tree in the center. I tied a garland to the headboard and then added a teardrop swag to either side. And finally, I just added a tray, a mirrored tray that had a candle and a small floral arrangement. I can easily pull it on and off the bed. It's another accessory that brings in that holiday feeling. This formal living room is a room that you have not yet seen. This is where Christmas morning happens for us. 
This year I decided to do three large trees, two at the opening and then my big one here behind me. Now you might be wondering, why do I need three trees? Well, I will tell you why. The trees at the entrance I purchased last year at an after Christmas sale for 80% off. I think I paid like $6 a piece, so they were a screaming deal. What I did with these trees was I placed them inside of some white urns and then I added some polyfill to cover up the gap between the tree and the urn. And then I just decorated them all with the same ornaments, the same ribbons. I have some white ribbons, some ribbon with some gold snowflakes on them and some gold mesh. This room just feels so festive. I love having all of these trees in here. And again, you'll notice that I used the same ornaments that I used in my foyer and in my dining room using ornaments that are the same and the same ribbons and the same color scheme tie each of these spaces together. Here we are in the heart of the home, the kitchen, the family room, and the breakfast area. This is where we spend the majority of the time as a family. And I wanted this space to feel magical, homey, cozy, and comfortable. Starting off here in the kitchen, I did a centerpiece that had those same jars, the same jars that I used in my foyer. I had some more of those jars. I filled them with some Epsom salt snow. I added some bottle brush trees and a thrifted Santa. I tied bows to the top and then I added a few on top of a sleigh. Underneath my cabinets, I created some small displays. I got a marble tray and I created a small flower arrangement. And then I added a few more of those bottle brush trees. And then in the center, underneath my hood and around my pot filler, I created a wreath. I added some gorgeous ornaments, poinsettias, and a Merry Christmas ribbon. And then I added a few holiday pieces inside of my cabinets. I have some plates with snowflakes, some sentimental pieces, and some glass candlesticks. The breakfast area is where we eat the majority of our meals. So I needed to put a centerpiece on here that we could easily remove. So I decided to steal that floral arrangement that I made for my office and I'm using it down here. This is perfect because it's small enough that we can just easily remove it when we want to eat our meals. But because of the height of this flower arrangement, it takes up a lot of space. I love the way that the orchids, which are a non-traditional holiday flower, tie in perfectly with my winter white color scheme. Another piece that I haven't shown you yet is this tree. This tree is a perfect addition to this family room. This year to tie in with my winter white theme, I went with some white ribbons. I did a thick ribbon and then layered a smaller ribbon in the center that had some snowflakes of gold and silver to tie in all the other ornaments. At the top, I added a mercury glass star, which again, fits in with gold and silver. I added a variety of ornaments, some big, some small, some sparkly, some matte, and I love the way it all comes together. And then at the bottom, I have my Polar Express train. Now this is a tradition that my husband does with the kiddos. They have a Polar Express night where they watch the Polar Express, they have hot cocoa and donuts, and they set up the train. <laughs> I have so many spaces that I absolutely love this year, but this one behind me is definitely in the running for first place. This mantle scape is just so pretty. Again, I use that asymmetrical garland design. I added that gold beaded garland. I added the bows and the poinsettias and all of the ornaments to tie in with the rest of the ornaments and garlands and bows throughout the house. 
On the mantletop, I added my thrifted Santa and of course his bag with some presents. And then I also added some mercury glass candlesticks with some mercury mirrored stars. And I added them at varying heights to give a little more drama to the space. Decorating shelves can be tricky business sometimes, especially at Christmas time, because you want it to look Christmassy. It's a fine balance between adding a lot of Christmas elements, but not overfilling your shelves. So what I did was I kept my white ginger jar that I keep out for the majority of the year. And what I did was I just added a large star ornament to the top. I just hung it from the finial and let it drape down. Above my ginger jar on the top shelf, I added some Christmas trees. I have a glass Christmas tree and a white faux fur Christmas tree with some silver sparkly snow at the top. Right here on this shelf above the TV, I have my thrifted nativity. I absolutely love this piece. I bought it last year and I wanted it to be a focal point. So I put it in the center of this shelf, tied in those other trees that I used on my other shelves with the glass and the faux fur. And you're really able to focus on this nativity, number one, because it's in the center, but there's not a lot of distracting elements that take away from it. Competing with my fireplace for number one is this display wall right here. I absolutely love the way that it looks. If you remember, we created these urns with some garlands and a trellis. I do have one addition, which is a white star that ties in with the rest of the stars in the house. I got two of these. I purchased them at Michael's and they're just ornaments, but I'm using them as tree toppers. I have the same Merry Christmas ribbon and ornaments, and those ornaments and ribbons tie in with my teardrop swags that I placed underneath my lanterns. These teardrop swags add the perfect touch to these lanterns. A lot of times you really don't know what to do with sconces, but teardrop swags or even wreaths like we added in the dining room are great options because it highlights these areas. On top of my buffet, I added my nativity that I broke up into three distinct areas and then topped off with some glass cloches. And then in the back, I have some more Christmas trees. This time they are in a green and gold color scheme. I am so excited to be sharing my decorated holiday home with all of you today. For weeks, we have been creating countless DIYs. We've decorated several rooms. We have done a lot of different displays and added a bit of Christmas magic to every single space. The entryway sets the mood. Right off the bat, you're giving a first impression to let other people say, hey, do I want to see more? I like to decorate on a grand scale. You only get one chance to make a first impression, so we've got to make it count. The color scheme for my Christmas decor this year is the copper and gold color combination. You are introduced to that color scheme the minute that you walk through the door. Here on my foyer table, I have these tall, gorgeous topiaries that we created. They have gold ornaments and copper bows, white poinsettias and some hanging gems and terrariums. And inside these terrariums, I have some battery operated candles that give a beautiful glow at night. Remember this nativity that I found at a thrift store for $14.99? Well, it has just been a beautiful focal point for this foyer table. It brings the eye directly to where I want it to be, which is to celebrate the birth of our savior. Right off the foyer table is the dining room. And as you remember, we created this beautiful centerpiece out of some topiaries that I created with some Dollar Tree baskets and some metal topiary forms. We took some Dollar Tree village houses and gave them a coat of white paint and added some champagne glitter for a little extra sparkle. 
I also have these framed pictures and the top corners of these frames I embellished with some snowflakes and some greenery. And then inside I put a free printable that each one of you can have. And then above on my chandelier, I put a flurry of snowflake ornaments. It's such a fun winter detail that makes it just feel so Christmassy. Now I have had a few inquiries about what I do with this centerpiece when we're using this table for dinner. Well, we don't use it very often. However, when we do, I just move it to that built-in buffet right behind me. And it's a beautiful display to look at while we're dining. It is a little bit of a hassle. I'm not gonna lie to you, but move it back. But it's all in the name of Christmas decor. On our way to the formal living room, we're going to stop by at our Christmas countdown clock. This is one of my favorite Christmas pieces of all time. I absolutely love this thing. And so do my kids, especially my little first grader. The first thing that she does in the morning is she runs down the stairs and moves the little clock hand to the correct date. Well, I guess it's the second thing she does. The first thing she does is find a sneaky little elf on the shelf and then she comes down to the clock but it's just a fun way for the kids to count down the days till Christmas. I'm ready for Santa to come, are you? Okay, here's my copper and gold Christmas tree. What do you think? I used some gold mesh and some white tulle. I also have those copper ribbons that we used in our foyer table display. I have some gold ornaments and some feathered copper ornaments. I have some poinsettias and some other botanicals. And then I have a big sprig and shower of twigs coming out of the top that I love the way that that looks. It just looks like it's exploding with Christmas flair. On this side of the Christmas tree, I have two side tables. And on top of those side tables, I have some topiary trees. Again, I use those same gold and copper ribbons, the tool, the same ornaments and botanicals. Can you see how using the same color scheme and design elements tie everything together? From the vantage point of the front door, you can see the foyer table, the dining table, the living room, and everything that's in them. So by using the same color scheme and design elements, it ties all of the spaces together. family room. This is where we as a family spend the majority of the time so it's important for me to make this space extra special. Long ago we decorated this side table. We displayed all of my nativities. As the focal point in this design I found this Christmas tree at my local thrift store for $7.99. It was pretty beat up but that was not a problem. We just gave it a quick makeover and now it has new life as a beautiful standout centerpiece on our table. These beautiful snowflakes were another one of those DIYs that we created during that video. I took these Dollar Tree snowflakes and added some extra fine glitter and now they are just so wintry and perfect for our Christmas display. I also created these teardrop swags with some Dollar Tree garland and some beautiful ribbons. I put them underneath my lanterns that flank either side of my table for some extra Christmas flair and some symmetry. I just love the way that these look, especially at night with the candlelight glowing. It just looks so beautiful. On these center shelves, I have my DIY comb Christmas trees that I made last year, as well as a beautiful glass Christmas tree. Above on this shelf, I have hung a Christmas wreath. To the center of the wreath, I have a beautiful wood star. I've had so many favorite design elements and decorations this year. However, the way that this mantle decor came together is by far my favorite design piece. It just is so stunning. Do you remember these candlesticks that we made out of Dollar Tree vases? 
I placed in some flicker flame candles and positioned them symmetrically on the mantle. We hydro dipped a couple of ornaments in gold and copper to get some extra color to go along with my color scheme. We also have these hanging terrariums that I added that bath salt snow into as well as a battery operated candle. Do you see how having some terrariums here coordinate with the terrariums that are hanging in my foyer? It just makes sense in designing. If you have elements that carry you from one room to the next, you don't know why you like a space, you just like it. So as you go about designing your rooms, try and carry in just a little bit from one room into the next because it will make your design cohesive. Last but certainly not least is this Christmas tree. Again, I used the same gold mesh. I used some similar ornaments to what I used on my other tree. I also used some of those feather ornaments and some copper ribbons. I can't forget to show you the Polar Express train encircling the bottom. I am curious to know which of these DIYs or design spaces is your favorite? Leave me a comment and let me know. It has been a joyful experience creating these spaces. I love the way each element came together to create one cohesive design.